Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this one broadcast that we're going to have this week in social handles. It's an important concept, and uh, I think it'll be worth your time, as today we talk about success. Now, when people think success, they think the red carpet, they think the big bank account, they think of popularity, they think of uh, a lot of pretty much what just is taught to them. And what they miss in so thinking that way is that there are other more personal definitions of success that are going to make them a lot happier and a lot more productive. And so it was a holdup for me as well because I had that uh, glitch. I had that definition put in my head from just drifting. And since I've looked at my own uh, idea and I've had my own dreamscapes, I've made my own visions, I've been around uh, other people that have helped me design this, I now have a better and more healthy vision of success. I mean, things we say uh, outside uh, before we get this concept down, we'll say things like, well, he makes more money and she's a better mother and they did better on the test and they got promoted and make sure that all the things I just said are just an envy concept, all right? When somebody else designs your idea of success, it normally just causes envy in you. You will never have peace or any self-concept of success by looking to other people to define it. You have to define it yourself. You and you alone have to define what is worthy of you. Now, sure, I'd like more money, a better car, better house, better people in your life, wouldn't you? Yeah, however, it's how they got it, what they did to get it. It's not for you to know. They may have got it honestly through some real serious hard work, or they may not have. It's not for your business to judge that they may have stole it or they may have worked hard for it. Most people who do the envy concept look at people badly by saying things like, I bet he stole it, I bet he cheated, I bet he's kissing up to the boss or something like that. Or, so they tear them down or they tear themselves down. I'll never get that, I'm never good enough, I'm never able. So you have all this really negative chatter. What you have to do is just respect the other people, give them the grace to know they may have worked their tails off. Maybe they worked late into the night or got up early in the morning. And while you're home safe and sound in bed, uh, maybe they've already been up and run around the block a few times or been at the gym or already at work or already starting to write that book or already making those calls. So uh, you discover you discover the, the way there. You have to get your own path to that. If you wanted to navigate, for example, through the streets of Dallas and I gave you a map to Baltimore, uh, it's going to be useless going to be absolutely useless. My way to success is not going to make somebody else successful because the way I'm doing it, though at times a bit backward and certainly uh, my own path, and I have other people in my life, probably not going to work for you. However, you have to blaze your own way, or as Lindsey Buckingham says, you have to go your own way. So also the other thing, and we discussed this in an earlier broadcast, it makes you ask the wrong questions envy does. If you cannot discover, and you can't discover, let me try this one more time. If you can't discover the right way to, to, to get what you need to be successful, then you're allowed to go and ask somebody to, who do you find to be successful? Uh, there's a friend of mine named Cliff Gibson, and he was asked by a millionaire, uh, he said, Cliff, are you a millionaire? And Cliff goes, no. And the man asked him, well, why not? That's a stupid, basic question. And a lot of life really is simple in some ways of what we can do. It's just not easy. So that basic or simple question, uh, is this all about money? No, that question really wasn't about money because actually, as, and as I've said before in a previous broadcast, uh, most artists, most people who are doing what they want, they, they're not doing what they want really just to ultimately make more money. 
they're doing it so they can make more of what they enjoy. A person who wants to become a guitarist doesn't really want it to just make more money. Though, again, there's nothing wrong with making more money. It's so that they can have a life where they get to be paid for playing the guitar. Uh, same thing with Walt Disney. He was asked, uh, you know, why was he making why was he making another film and another film and another film after Snow White and so many other smaller cartoons that he was doing on the side as well as the big uh, huge productions? Uh, he was asked, is it just to make more money? He goes, no, so I can make more art, so I can make more movies, which he enjoyed doing. And understand, the man had several nervous breakdowns and some bankruptcy. He had to sell his house, and, or mortgage his house, that is. So you ultimately are not doing this just for more money. Yeah, I know. Money's, there's not a problem with money. And is money important? I, I can't remember who said it. I think it was Warren Buffett said that, no, money's not everything, but it is right up there with oxygen. So you do want to have some and enough to successfully do what you were enjoying further down the road. There was the successful businessman, though, although he hung around really good people and uh, they traveled a lot and they saw the countryside and he was exposed to things that uh, he had never really experienced before. Uh, he never let these people influence him. Yeah, he listened, but he also schemed. He followed, he prepared, and he made a lot of money, at least 30 pieces of silver. You see, Judas was a financial success, but he was unhappy with self. He sold himself out. He sold his friends out. He sold the Lord out. He failed on a number of levels and for a lot of different reasons, but ultimately he didn't have the belief that comes with internal programming. Or more theologically put, his faith was too small because his belief was too small because his programming. What he chose to let into his mind was not heaven-based. Therefore, his goals were too small and way too short term. So remember your goals, when, which we talked about before, uh, you have to figure out what you want and you just write it down. You figure out what you want and you write it down. In, uh, you can look up SMART goals. SMART goals are also spelled out in my first book. But uh, remember that you have to uh, not set your goals too low. You don't join the easy crowd. You, uh, you go where the demands are high. And you do not compromise. You do not sell out when it comes to your goal. Remember in Mark 8:36, it says, What is good for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their very soul? People live either by hesitation or anticipation. Hesitation is a scarcity, fear-based concept. Anticipation is the belief you can do more. Goals help you set that. Remember, they make you uncomfortable. And success follows goals. You can do this. Judas didn't see things going the way he envisioned, and he reacted in fear. So what's your definition of success? What is your personal definition of success? You will lock arms with others who are on the same path as yourself. You will do this automatically uh, on the path to destruction or success. But you have to make a choice. You have to make a choice to turn and lock arms with others that then these things require social handles. And these, these paths that you go on will lead you in direction that you either just believe you deserve or what you really want. So the call to action today is define what is your idea of success. What is your idea of success? You wanna be a, a good single mom or dad? Do you want to launch a business? Do you want to start a church? Do you want to impress others? Or do you want to influence others? Do you want to have a belief system that says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me? Okay. And when you do things through Christ, that means you're going to do it his way. So do you also uh, want to have that call to action where you're going to call a friend or a client? You're going to ask forgiveness. You're going to tell somebody the good news. Are you going to give forgiveness? All these things are calls to action. All these things require social handles. And all these things are one view, one definition, one slice of success. It has very little to do with money. It has everything to do with having social handles enough to lock arms with people who you love 
who you like and who maybe you don't even like. Some of them are family. Some of them can all be friends. All of them can be friends. It's just really a matter of you opening up your arms and embracing these people, embracing yourself. If you have questions or comments as we go along, I'd love to hear them. Please put it there. Hey, Sam, good to see you. Mike, good to have you here. Chris, y'all feel free to uh, pass this on to other people. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter. I'm uh, on, obviously, Facebook at Had Enough Guy. And you can find me at iverchester.com. Really appreciate your time. I don't take it lightly. Uh, this will be the only broadcast this week. We'll start up again three times uh, next week at 1230. Until then, thank you for your time and interest. Pass this along to others. Let's grow this. I say this all in uh, Christ's name and in your belief. Thanks. We'll see you next time.